episode four, take two. Yeah. Our first one didn't save. Yes. So we're trying again. So you are welcome. All right. Here we go. All right. Welcome back um, to this week's episode. Really excited about this one. But let's go ahead and start with talking about what we're reading right now for our read alouds. Oh yeah. So in my house, we are reading a book, a cute book called The Huguenot Garden. And it um, takes place in France, and it's these, uh, it's kind of like a religious political thing with um, the Huguenots are being forced out of their homes and their faith and being forced to, to worship the king's religion, kind of the book. But it's been really good. My kids and I are enjoying it a lot. What time period is it set in? Mm. That's a hard question. Oh, okay. Like, but not I'm trying to remember. Thing. No, no, definitely not current. It's, it's uh, I don't know. 18, 1700s? No, probably 17 or 16. Even. Oh, okay. It's a pretty old time period. Oh, awesome. Oh. I can't remember. That's okay. <laughs> I'm putting on the spot. <laughs> um, we just finished this week Eric Liddell. Oh, yeah. Um, I would like to sing for you. Just kidding. I don't want to do that to anybody ever. Um, but the Chariots of Fire song, that's yeah. the movie that Eric Liddell, that song was written for the movie about him. And he was a Scotsman, but he was actually born in China. His parents were missionary. Oh, cool. And he came back to boarding school like a lot of little uh, kids from the United Kingdom did in that time period. And he was a really good runner, and he was able to do stuff at the Olympics. I would not spoil anything else because it's really great. He was known as the Flying Scotsman because one time... A boat was leaving and he needed to be on it and he was that kind of thing. So he ran down the game plate and jumped on the boat. <laughs> so he's called the Flying Scotsman. That's funny. Super great book. I may or may not have gotten a little teary-eyed at the end, um, but that's how I like to roll these days as I'm getting more emotional. I cry at the end of books all the time. <laughs> yeah, you're normal. <laughs> um, so fun fact about me, if you guys don't know me very well, I am a terrible beekeeper. Uh, it's <laughs> I've been doing it for years and I'm really bad at it, but I still do it and uh, I've watched YouTube videos. I've read books and I've been to a lot of classes of how to be a beekeeper I've even had someone come to my house whom I like to re affectionately refer to as the bee whisperer He was a little different and um, put his hands in my beehives with no gloves or smoke or anything and the bees did not sting him because he was one with the bees. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful and frightening all wrapped into one. But if all these places I've gone to and all the speed people I've spoken to have told me a different way of how to be a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. And homeschooling is the exact same way. Yeah. If you asked 100 people, how do you homeschool? You would get 100 different answers. That is so true. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about how each of us does it in our home. And they don't look the same as each other, Very but different. we're still friends, and that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'll start out with our day, and this is just kind of a typical day. And I'll tell you that it never looks the same each day in our home, because it's just going to... I mean, life happens. Very, very <laughs> Put it that way. Um, but we start out... Well, starting out, I am kind of a mix of a variety of styles of homeschooling. I've read a lot of different books and a lot of different... Um, you know, methods, and I kind of pick and choose what I like from each of them to make them work for us and for our home, because um, not all of it works, and I don't fit into any one mold, right. and I think that that's really good to understand that you don't have to. I used to try to, and, and it doesn't just last long. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. So um, I've pulled a lot of ideas from different things, but for the past two years, we've been doing the Good and the Beautiful curriculum by Jenny Phillips, and have loved it. We've had a great experience with that. And then we use her language arts and her history and her science this year. Um, and I, I've liked all of them a lot. They've been, they've been great. My kids are happy with them, so that's, that's a good thing. That's a really um, good thing. <laughs> right. And I, I have a preschooler, a second grader, a sixth grader, and a ninth grader. And they're all using that for their schooling. So it's been really great. Um, my ninth grader is doing some different things. I can share that too. So we are, for math, we're using teaching textbooks, which is all an online program, and that's been great for us too. We like that one a lot. It causes the least amount of tears in our home <laughs> of all the math programs we've tried. So that's been a good one. And our house, we're pretty laid back in our scheduling, but it's kind of more of a scheduled time period of schooling. So we know we do school in the morning when we wake up, and we know we try and get it done in the early afternoon. 
And that's sort of our time period. The kids know this is school time and that once they're done, they can have free time and do mm -hmm. what they want to do. And we start just in the morning with breakfast and we gather at the table to eat together and we do a devotional. And our devotional consists of a scripture reading, a hymn, a verse and a poem that we memorize, character study, and that can be books or different um, little programs we, we've used. It's a cute one called We Choose Virtues that just has little virtues that the kids can learn about. And um, it's great for young kids. And as they get older, we do you know more advanced stuff on character and man manners and etiquette and things like that. I think those are really important for them to learn. And then also I have just some little artist cards. Those are from Usborne that each day we just look at a little print and it tells the name of the artist and a little few facts about them. And my kids love looking at those. I think we've gone through the deck twice. I probably should freshen that up a bit <laughs> this next year, but it's been good. We enjoy that. And then also we'll go through, I didn't, um, I forgot to mention this previously, <laughs> but you guys didn't hear the first one, but we do Latin and Greek roots. And um, there's just a book that we use. That I think has I use the, the what's that called? I always forget what it's called. But it has them both in there, like different meanings. The Latin and the Greek roots have them. And you can flip through and we just, we just use that. It's easy. Like the prefix? Yep. The suffix? Yep. Okay. Yep. And then the root? Yeah. Okay. So then once our devotional's finished, um, we, you know, breakfast cleanup and all that, but we just, the kids each have a checklist of what they're supposed to do each day. And, and it varies like Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So each day, like Monday and Wednesday, they'll have the same schedule as Tuesday and Thursday usually because um, we rotate history and science. And we also will rotate, we do artist and uh, music study, um, and we do nature study, and then a day where they get to do learning games. And those can be board games or iPad educational games and things like that. So those, those rotate day to day, but their daily stuff that they do is their math and their language arts, and they'll do um, foreign language, the older ones, and let me think what else, I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, oh, literature, <laughs> you know, reading the book, and, you know, just kind of the basics that they do each day, and the others will rotate, and um, it's a pretty relaxed schedule for us. They can do things in whatever order they want. They just know that they have to check off all the things on the list, and um, at lunchtime, we gather again, and that's where we'll do together. We'll do history or science and a read aloud, whatever book that we're reading at the time, and, and then whatever they haven't finished after lunch, they'll just finish off their stuff. Some days they're done by one. Um, some days they're done by five. Right. It just depends on their attitude that day, their motivation that day. It's funny, sometimes my kids will wake up and say, I'm gonna get a head start, and they'll just jump right in and be finished super early. And then other days it takes you know, hours of tears <laughs> instead. So you just never know what you're gonna get. But that's kind of our basic daily schedule. Awesome. Okay, now we're gonna give mine. Um, like Karen, ours has changed year to year. When I started, my oldest was first grade. And so I had all little kids, so a lot of differences. And then when I had all six of them, when I was teaching them every subject, it was a lot more intense. And you start to learn ways to keep your sanity and to also provide a great education for your children. And I feel like I'm in a really good space right now. So this is the current, what we do, um, um, like Karen said, mostly what we do. The other day I had a very sick baby and so it looked a little bit different because we weren't able to play games because he was passed out right onto my lap and I couldn't move. So it was a little bit different. But here is a typical day for us. Uh, we do school just four days a week and Karen's the same way. We go to the same co-op on Fridays. And um, for my family, we do school all year. But I guess you guys do school all year as well. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, but they don't call it school in the summer. <laughs> they call it chores. Yeah, no. I keep it a lot simpler in the summertime where, you know, just two things or something a day. But um, yes. I, I don't really call it school because it stresses my kids out. They want summer break, and so they're getting summer break. They just have to do their English and their math during the summer. And then we go to the pool. <laughs> yes. Um, so... I divide my year into four different 12 week terms and my summer term is very light and if we go on vacation I don't worry about missing anything because I'm doing school all year and we do a lot of those ho Monday holidays we still do school my kids 
Yeah. Say, all oh, the neighbor kids don't have school, and I go, that's cool. Anyway, let's go back to what we're <laughs> studying. Um, so that's kind of the basics of what we do. During the uh, school year, we are much more intense and have a bigger schedule. So here's our typical day. Um, this year, we actually finally involved Dad in scripture study, and I'm sorry to say that we haven't involved him before, but he, he's really wanted to obviously be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And we use uh, the Come Follow Me curriculum from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we get up, and this is not early for those of you who have done the school and seen, but 7.45 is when we start, because mm -hmm. that's when I'm home from the gym and before my husband leaves to go to the gym. And after we do scripture study, the kids have to go do their chores and eat breakfast. And we try to start school, and I use the word try, around 9.30, because it can be anywhere from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. when we find Not them. 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> 10 a.m., yeah, that would be awesome. No, I'm in bed by 9 p.m. There's no way I'm doing school at 10. That's funny. Great catch, Karen. But then we do meet all together. Um, this is the only time we're together with just the kids in homeschooling that are not in the online programs or twice a week programs in different mm -hmm. schools. And I guess I should talk a bit more a little bit about that. Maybe my big kids just go to a charter school that's twice a week that is college classes. And my daughter, who's ninth grade, is all online. So just with the other three, this is what we do. We do our read aloud and a subject of the day. And subject of the day is usually, and Mondays used to be art study, but in their language arts with the good and the beautiful, it actually has an artist study. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was beating a dead horse, and I, I changed it. And that's the beautiful thing about homeschooling. Mm -hmm. If it's you have too much of something or it's not working, you just change it. Yeah. So Mondays we do Greek, because how cool is it that my I'm a homeschooler that <laughs> learns Greek or Latin, right? Um, and word roots, same like Karen. My husband's actually, his uh, undergrad degree was in linguistics. And so if we can ever incorporate languages, his nerdy linguistic heart, he's great. He, he knows them all. He does. Like it's crazy. He should be homeschooling, but somebody has to pay for my lavish lifestyle. Not that I like <laughs> to, tell him, to buy my big white van. Um, and then on Tuesdays, if you follow me on Instagram, you see a lot of Tuesdays are slightly inappropriate with time and poetry. Um, I always say Megan's the fun one. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of drinking games this winter with Martinelli's. My kids didn't actually know that there were really drinking games and they're like, you're so fun, you made up this drinking game. I, thought, I am so fun. That, this is the only time you've ever heard of this. So we do a poet and then a composer. On Wednesdays, we've been doing Explorers and Geography, and that's been a ton of fun. Because we'll, we sing a song, because I'm all about singing and dancing, and then we'll read about an explorer and like his, what he did. And You have to see some of Megan's <laughs> songs on YouTube. You'll enjoy them. I think my husband just caught us the other day, and uh, he posted on his Instagram or Facebook or something, and I thought, ah, I like when you don't see what I do. Some of these things are... Yeah, anyway, I'm being comfortable with in my own skin, but it's way fun and explorers and a lot of explorers were not good people mm -hmm. And so as we read some of the books that were like they plundered this village and they did this and you're like Ugh, oh, All right, right. well, about that one. <laughs> here's a song and a dance about plundering friends Hello. Um, And then Thursdays we do Shakespeare. So that's the what we do all together And then my kids kind of do a break right not like a take a break but break apart and they have a checklist of what they go do on their own. And on my Instagram stories, I have it saved where you can see every book that they're reading and every subject. So I'm not going to um, give you all those details right here. Just go check it out. I'm on the Hippie Mama on Instagram. You can go see that. I'm sure it's on my website somewhere. But I know for sure it's on my Instagram. Um, then I do to make sure my kids are actually doing school. We'll do the... Uh, how to know your kids are telling the truth on a different episode. <laughs> but I got to learn the hard way to how to make sure your kids are actually reading their books. And that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. Tara knows that story well. Uh, but we do Minute with Mom. And it lasts way longer than a minute. And in a good way. I don't mean like, oh, this is never ending. But uh, they tell me, they go through their checklist from the day before. And they just kind of say, Okay, for scriptures, I read about, and Josh was reading the New Testament, so his are usually, is it the New Testament that it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man into heaven? And he drew the best picture of a camel <laughs> with a, a big long needle and another camel slapping his back like, you got this right. <laughs> That's cute. But 
then we would talk about it, right? And sometimes it leads to really great discussions, especially historical books and scriptures. And sometimes they're just fun and silly. Yeah. So I'm usually done with school by 11.30 or noon. And it's kind of nice that my kids are done with school when they're done with school. So sometimes they focus and get it done. And sometimes they choose to play and then do school later. And we just have a family rule that it has to be done by dinner. Yeah. So that is, yeah, that's our typical day of homeschooling for this year. Because <laughs> it may change next year. <laughs> next year we'll do it again. And yeah. you can hear it all over again. All right. So we're going to talk about now some of the different methods of homeschooling. Um, when you start learning about homeschooling, that's one thing you'll start hearing a lot about is what method or what style are you using to homeschool? And um, so we're just going to cover a couple. These are some of my favorites or some of the more common ones that you'll hear about. Yes. And we'll start with Charlotte Mason. This is one that I know both Megan and I have used a lot of her influence. Yes. In our my homeschool. homeschool is very loosely, like if you're a hardcore Charlotte Masoner, you would probably say my homeschool is not Charlotte Mason, but mm -hmm. it's what I'm structured the most like. Yeah. Yeah. And mine is similar to that as well. And she was an educator in the 1800s in England and introduced just really beautiful methods of learning. And she has some, she has a whole volumes of books that you can mm -hmm. read and they're great. They're, you know, a little more advanced language because it was written you know in the 1800s some time ago <laughs> yes yeah, so there are there's a really great book and i would say it wrong for the uh, sake for of, the children's sake for the children's sake and mm -hmm. somebody in our modern time took her writings and simplified it into a book yeah and highly highly recommend that one yeah it's great to read multiple times probably yes um but she she believes that children are people and deserve respect which i believe that as well and she strongly encourages habit training in children and says that education is an atmosphere that you create with the books and the art and the music that you surround yourself with. And I love that so much because I really have strived to do that in our home. Um, I remember early on in our homeschooling years when I started understanding this concept where I went through and cleaned out so many books that we had that were really just kind of garbagey books. And it just made me think twice about the things I was letting my children read. So I've been a lot more careful and cautious about the things I bring into my home since I learned about this. I like Charlotte Mason's ideas too of kind of short and sweet, mm -hmm. but of uh, high quality. Yeah. That if you're going to read Shakespeare, it does not have to be three hours of sitting there and reading Shakespeare, but it can be short and sweet and giving you that love of learning. Mm -hmm. And then afternoons are for getting outside yeah. and being in nature. Yeah. She's really about nature. She's really big on nature study and that's something we try a lot to do as well. Um, another method that I love a lot is the Thomas Jefferson education, often called TJ Ed. And he, or the author, Oliver DeMille, has written most of the books on this. And he teaches a lot about different phases of learning. There's core, love of learning, transition to scholar, and then scholar phase, where the kids are, um, as, they, as they move up into these different phases, they're more capable of, capable of higher learning and um, kind of more challenging too. Right. Yeah. And the scholar phase, they, they really want kids by this point to be owning their education and wanting to do it on their own and really, you know, diving into what they want to study. And, and I, I think that you probably as well, but my son has definitely reached that, you know, with his education yes. where he's independent in his learning and he's doing it on his own and has gotten to that point and that's something I love. And then they also focus a lot on finding your mission in life and helping kids to find a love of learning which is another yes. goal of mine. And if you've ever heard in a homeschool co-op, if they say they have Lemmy classes, those are classes that are based off of TJ Ed or Thomas mm -hmm. Jefferson Education. Um, those are some of those classes that are Knights of Freedom. Uh, what, there's a girl one, too. Uh, I didn't teach. I, I think taught made that up. Oh, I thought that there was. <laughs> I'm Ladies not sure. of Liberty, of Liberty, Liberty, I think, is what we did. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. But it's good either way. But, yeah, and then it progresses. So knights are learning some of those uh, character traits mm -hmm. and, and having fun and reading good books. And yeah. then it just progresses. Yeah, and I taught last year one called The Pyramid Project, which is all about scientists and mathematicians. And it was a really fun class to teach. But you can take training courses to teach their LEMI courses. LEMI stands for Leadership Education Mentoring Institute, I believe, Hopefully. or something like that. I know it's Leadership Education. I'm not certain on the MI. But um, really great, really great stuff. Um, their books were kind of the big influence for me. Some of the first ones I read when I decided to homeschool. I think there's a good one too called A Lollipop Education. Yes. I think yes. I actually borrowed your book. That one is great. Yeah. Uh, but it kind of is a simplified version of the Thomas Jefferson mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. method. Yeah. 
Another one I want to talk about is called the Well-Educated Heart. And this might not be as well known outside of you know, our little bubble sphere, <laughs> but it's something that we both have loved the influence of. And um, it was developed by Marlene Peterson. And her website is, I think it's Libraries of Hope. Um, but if you go to, if you Google Well-Educated Heart, it'll take you right there too. But what her kind of whole concept is um, teaching you to warm the heart first and yes. to build, and build a relationship with your kid because you can't really teach something to somebody if there's no love and no relationship. Right. And I love, love, love that philosophy. Mm -hmm. that she and she uses. does that through great books, like classic books that um, many of the books that she has on her site are books that were hard to find or were out of print and she has made them accessible again through printed volumes that she's putting together. But also, you can find you know links to read them for free online, um, which is a great option for low cost homeschooling. We'll talk about another day. Um, yes, but I I use, I will try to incorporate her philosophy. I don't necessarily use her method. She kind of does a monthly rotation, yeah. and so like astronomy for January, and and so it rotates monthly, which mm -hmm. doesn't work for my style. Yeah, it didn't work super well for us either. But I have loved her resources and her um, philosophy as well. Yes. And then just a couple of other, I'll touch on just briefly, but there's boxed curriculum sets that you can purchase that you literally buy the whole set and it sends you, you know, all the books, all the workbooks, whatever you may need and the teaching guide to, to work through it. And this year I'm working with Sunlight and that's one of them that does that. They're a Christian company that has it and my ninth graders using theirs and we've had a really positive experience with it. I've been really impressed with it. And then some other ones that are similar, there's Bookshark, Memoria Press, which is classical style, Oak Meadow and Timber Doodle, and, and I know there's a ton more that you can kind of Google and find more if you want more info on that. But it's a great way, if you have the budget, because they're pricier. Oh, are they? I've never yeah, used Yeah, if box you buy a whole box set, it's, I mean, 800 to $900. Oh, I'm like so it's, cheap. It's a big amount of money up front. Um, but if you have the funds to do that and you're just starting out, it's a really, really easy way to do it because everything's just handed to you and oh, you just nice. follow the outline. That, that would also there. help you if you're feeling a little nervous with the confidence mm -hmm. to have somebody to tell you what to do until you kind of get your feet wet yes. and gain that confidence. Yes, definitely. And there are cheaper ways to do it if you just buy the teacher manuals and stuff and then you go buy all the books used that they recommend. I may have done that sometimes. <laughs> um, so that's an option. And then there's a lot of online schools that you can do, and Megan's kids are doing the online program yeah, through so locally here. Uh -huh, just through Lumen, and I want to say Lumen Scholar Institute, mm -hmm. Rob, I call it Lumen, but that's just here in Utah, and um, it's all online, and so yeah. just my ninth grader, so she can have her high school diploma. But they have accredited ones also, like K-12 and Connections Academy are ones that are accredited and are actually affiliated with public schools, but they're, most states, they're free, mm -hmm. which is a really good thing as well if you need something like that. And then there's Time for Learning, IXL and Easy Peasy is another one I've heard a lot of people using. And Easy Peasy is free, um, so a lot of people like that too. Um, another one is unit studies. Unit study is another style that a lot of people like where they'll focus on one topic and they'll topically teach, you know, they'll teach writing. So let's say ancient Egypt, for instance. They'll teach writing through ancient Egypt. They'll do art project and history and everything okay. related to that topic. Um, and they let the kids pick the topic often, oh, or maybe fun. the parents will. I don't know. It could go either way, but that's a that's a common way. I think I tried a too. unit study right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I tried some as well, and then unschooling is another big one. I was gonna say so. This one is one that sometimes gives homeschoolers a bad name. Mm -hmm. um, I think done right, it could be amazing. Yeah, kind of agree. the philosophy behind it is to follow your child's interests and focus. Yes. And um, so if your kid is outside and they see a butterfly and they're like, that butterfly was so amazing, I want to know more about butterflies. And you go to the library and get books on butterflies and watch documentaries on butterflies, create an artwork about butterflies, and you kind of just let them lead and really get into learning. Mm -hmm. um, it also can turn into, oh, maybe I, well, I will say it. So it could also turn into just, you go figure something out. Go watch yeah. a YouTube video, go do something. Yeah. Mom's busy. Yeah, it can be very, very unstructured or a little more structured by the, the things you have in your home and surround yourself with and your children with. 
Um, I know some people will set up a learning table with just you know things that may entice the children to learn mm -hmm. and let them explore their learning, and that's how they would do it. So I obviously don't do unschooling. I don't either. I'm I'm really into structure and a little more consistency in our home. Not saying one way is better than the other. I, I really think it's important through this whole process. The biggest thing I've learned is the comparison thing. Yes. You cannot compare the way you want to do it and the way it works for your home with how we're doing it or your friend is doing it or that person online that you like to watch. You just can't do it because the comparison is never going to work and it's going to make you feel bad all the time. Like you're not good enough or you're not doing it the right, right she way. She does it this way and mm -hmm. she's succeeding and why am I, it's not working for me. It's just going to make your mom go crazy. Yeah. So follow your sense of what you feel is right for your family and do some research and study and learn about these different things and find the pieces that work for you to make it work for your family. Absolutely. Um, so that's what we have for today. Yeah. And we want to thank you guys for listening. And just remember, you've got this, Mama. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Right. Cut off your other stuff. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Just we went long. Long. Yeah, I was going to say, we talked a lot more. Yeah. And um, I, I totally was like, oh, you didn't hear that last time. Oh, well, no, I'm like stupid. Why did I just say that? Oh, well. Well, well we can try and cut that. It recorded right in. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs>